Okay, so welcome to the third part and the final part of this series. And we're talking about how to implement curriculum for teaching entrepreneurship here in Finland for now for older students, ninth grade and above. Um, <clears throat> so for the eighth graders, it's kind of a mix of the scaffolding and then into this. And now we're going to be talking about communities of practice. Um, and eighth graders, they're going to, you need to gauge what their sense of needs are and the amount of assistance that they're going to need for them to build their project. Um, some you might even talk to for 45 seconds during the whole contact hour just to say, okay, everything good, good, great, cool. Um, some you really need to drag out of that emotional um, ditch that teenagers can find themselves in. But in ninth grade, they're, um, but in ninth grade, they're in their groups. They're now like stakeholders within their groups. So there's uh, invested interest into the group. They've, they've committed a lot of hours. Um, people have made a lot of commitments with each other over the past 18, 24 months. And now they're really starting to develop knowledge organically within themselves. In seventh grade, you kind of you build the environment and you try to mold their behavior in a certain direction. But by ninth grade, um, they're organically building knowledge within their groups and then testing that against the global knowledge that they can uh, they can see in Wikipedia. Um, so one of the, the things in the seventh grade video that I forgot to mention is that, you know, in the seventh grade, what I like them to do is um, with their parents create a, a Wikipedia account and try to edit information there so they can see how easy it is to, to manipulate data. Uh, so by the ninth grade, they're, they're creating their organic knowledge and then they're able to test that against knowledge that they're able to find from the world. Um, they're creating customer surveys, so they're, they're not only just talking to the class and maybe a business plan pitching competition about their idea, but now they're talking to their, their peers. Um, if it's a large school, they can do um, up to 30 customer surveys. So they're, at, they're going out and they're, they're showing other students, look what I've created in the prototyping section of the class in seventh and eighth grade. I really had to change the prototype and this is what I've got now. What do you like about it and how much would you pay me for it kind of thing. Um, and some students in the group really love that statistical part of it. Some people in, in the group really love the design, the product design part of it. Uh, so teaching entrepreneurship and getting them in, in groups where they build their own objectives and they build their own frameworks. Um, you know, they're able to kind of get down into the passion and what really makes them creative. So that's where that interaction and of knowledge and the acquiring knowledge is. So as they're moving into the ninth grade, uh, we really have them control their own communities. Um, they're still building their own objectives. They, they've probably now made some kind of commitments with outside stakeholders in the community. If it's building a prototype at the local university, or if they've won some investment money, or some have just given a business plan completely up from the seventh grade and now they're starting a new one completely up. Uh, maybe sometimes with a different group, but the ninth grade, they're, they're getting past that, that scaffolding. <clears throat> um, sometimes in the ninth grade, they're getting rid of a business plan that they wrote in the seventh grade and it's completely out. Uh, new members have come into the group, members have left, um, but at this point in the ninth grade, they're able to get into the communities themselves and, and start discussing amongst themselves. So they're building communication skills between themselves with their peers, and, and they're really pushing that fear factor of presenting a prototype that they might have built on their own to, to their peers. And so they're really putting themselves out. So one of the interesting things about community of practices is that in that idea, groups go through their natural life cycle process. Um, and the middle schoolers and students do as they grow older. Um, but the, the process within communities of practices, the theories, um, is much like the life cycle of a product. So it starts with inquiry. This, the group gets together. Um, then it moves on to design, prototype, launch, grow, sustain. These are all the titles of the different phases the group goes through in the community of practices. 
even though they have the words like prototype, which go hand in hand with business. Um, so as you're building your class around the communities of practice idea, um, you, re you have to allow the, the students to get together in that inquire uh, stage and allow them to explore their, you know, really who's capable of doing what, what their objectives are, um, what they can commit to it, what can they commit to that. Um, so they've got to really have time to do that. And then um, at that same time, I tell them how they'll be gauged at the very end of the process. Um, so they just kind of submit a one page business plan and they've got to submit it to the, the business plan competition. They do that, they pass the class. So then they move into the design phase and they start designing their own goals and their own uh, milestones within their group. And then they move into the prototype um, aspect of communities of practice. And that's where they um, start really testing their group and they can, they can see what other groups are doing and how they're going to build something compared to another group. So they're starting to mold it a little bit. Um, and then they go into the launch phase. The, the group goes into launch phase. And um, this is where they really start to introduce their group to the other groups. They do their first practice pitch. So they've, they've learned a few aspects of entrepreneurship and business, like the four P's and a SWOT analysis. And so they get up for a couple minutes and they give a, an idea of what their product or service would be for the four P's and the SWOT. And even it's, but it's informal. Um, and then the, gr the groups grow. So then they, they really focus on the marketing side for a week or two. And then they, each group grows at its own organic rate. So if it's over a school year or if it's a workshop, um, however you can phase this group development um, will lead then to communities of practices. So if you're doing a, a full day workshop at a school, the last, the last hour is, is gonna have to be uh, assessment where the students can go around and look at different posters, for example, or listen to the pitches from different groups. If it's a full year, then, um, then you can have different practice sessions and really dive into some of the, the actual content or, or they can really start telling other groups the knowledge that they're building out of their groups. And um, so then you just get really dynamic with it. So then what's really cool about communities of practice is them. And the ninth grade curriculum here in Finland is that the ninth graders are really supposed to be um, acquiring knowledge about their community. But then with this curriculum, they're not only acquiring knowledge, but they're building knowledge for the community. They're actually able to um, objectively, <clears throat> they're actually able to objectively look out into the community and brainstorm with their peers, their other stakeholders within the community and, and come up with an idea. So, so I believe it um, completely meets the, the national curriculum. And then knowing that it's based off of uh, sound educational research from universities here in Scandinavia to the States, um, I really think that teaching entrepreneurship to middle school students, and if you, you start with a scaffolding practice and you move them into communities of practices, and you really focus on fostering an environment and an experience with them, that they'll naturally become active learners within their society. Um, and that will sustain them for a long time. So teaching entrepreneurship in this method from introducing scaffolding techniques in the seventh grade to moving into communities of practices in high school, the students are able to um, to be a little bit more enlightened within their society and be able to make a little bit more of an impact than they thought they would be able to. And um, I've sure been surprised every year I've done this with them, um, the, the level of um, the, just the vast ideas that teenagers have when you don't put limitations on it. Um, and then just for a year, they, for a year, they just go wild with the idea. Um, so, just fostering the environment and allowing them to be themselves. But, but at the same time, you, you, you have to build situations where they face fear, um, like public speaking and talking to their peers. Um, so there's like the controlled fear growth there, which researchers from Finland here are talking about. And so as researchers are debating different issues, uh, society's needs are gonna change uh, the abilities of a teacher within the classroom are going to change. 
So this whole ecosystem of how education is works within your community, um, I believe this technique would work. But knowing that research is going to change, needs are going to change, this curriculum is going to need to change. And I would love to hear more from everybody um, about some of the practices and the principles that they're implementing into their classrooms. Um, if you just happen to be in a country or region where my university has alumni, um, it's easy for me to arrange a meeting for you guys to go over that. So please remember to check the links in the description and all the information about communities of practices and the other learning theories that we've discussed here can be found there. Thank you.